Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, today um, uh, it's my goal to uh, to go over the uh, exercise that I asked you to undertake, um, uh, but to use that as a springboard for uh, deepening our understanding of some of the issues we talked about last time, uh, issues uh, associated with joining, um, some issues associated with work you with survey data, um, and uh, in fact, this relationship between data frames and data sets. Um, and so specifically, we've been working with uh, things that might nominally be considered data sets. They're in fact data frames because they don't have important type information with them. We can't manipulate them using static type information. And we'll see how to in fact turn them into typed data sets, okay? Um, so we can take advantage of type safety um, with them um, while still retaining the uh, uh, the, uh, the basic functionality we've been using. Uh, when we want to refer to column names by name, we can do so. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, we can use things in a, pursue things in a type safe way. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just to make sure we're all on the same page here and uh, to to help address some of these questions which came up about disconnection and so on. I am going to, I think, run this code, which I'll be, uh, which I'll have here on my computer. Now, what I'll further do is send to you, um, I think a copy of this code in case you'd like to follow along um, in detail. Um, so this will be, I'll just uh, send it to each, um, so then, um, uh, Bo, um, and then Iman, and now, and then Whale. Hopefully, I may have to cut this from the video. Um, <laughs> otherwise, you may start receiving spam. Spam messages. How did he do that? Ask him this. Um, okay, so this is code for. Um, uh, uh, CMPT 898, March 13 lecture, right? There we go. Then again, maybe you'll start getting hiring messages, you know, like, <laughs> come work for me. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, you could survive that, you could survive anything. Um, okay, so uh, I've just sent that off. Um, I'd invite you to, to get it and follow along if you'd like to do so. What I'm going to do is to start the Dockerized um, uh, version of Zeppelin and Spark and Cassandra. Uh, here we go. And uh, whilst this is starting up, I'll just point out something. It's going to scroll a bit, probably. Um, so uh, I stand neglectful for not having mentioned with respect to undertaking this and future exercises with Spark, or the Dockerized version of Spark, that. Um, that the Cassandra server we're dealing with, like much of our resources, is behind the UFS firewall. And what this means is that you can access it from within uh, UFS uh, computers uh, fairly broadly um, without uh, difficulty. But if you're going outside the university, if you're going outside the UFS firewall, um, you're going to have to contend with the fact that um, uh, the the Cassandra server itself is uh, is behind that firewall, and the way in which we typically deal with this is through a VPN connection. Okay, um, and uh, it turns out there's multiple ways to set up VPN connections um, to do tunneling. Um, uh, so a colleague has shown me sort of ways through the browser you can set up for particular ports. But what I tend to do for this case is used is use the UFS um, uh, uh, VPN, okay? UFS VPN is available for download from multiple platforms, and uh, it's the Cisco AnyConnect system. Now, um, the Cisco AnyConnect system uh, works fine for this with two provisos, with two caveats, okay? One proviso is that before, well, you, you'll want to, probably before you connect, um, go to the preferences, and you want to be sure, this is, I think, specific to Dockerized version of Zeppelin, to allow LAN access when using the VPN, okay? Um, 
Uh, this is going to um, support uh, the web access from within Docker, okay? Um, uh, I seem to have a bad habit of staying up to between 11 and 12 preparing material for this course the night before the, the course has to be offered. And Winchell and I, I think, stayed up till one. And Winchell stayed up till three, I think, trying to sort of frob the settings. And, and we discovered that. And the other thing which he discovered is that you want to run Docker with this with this little um, command line um, option, uh, dash dash net equals host, OK? Now, Winchell uh, engaged in mumbling behavior about this, um, saying that uh, this is not the best way to do it. Um, uh, I, think, I think the point is that if you're running a Docker container that's not secure, that this could allow it to promiscuously pretend it's it's like your host computer, something along those lines. So he didn't recommend this in general. But for this class and for running Zeppelin and Spark and so on, uh, I think it should be a fine option. Okay. So this dash dash net equals host will allow inside the Docker container to use that VPN. Okay. Um, that's the basic uh, deal here, and um, uh, and and I should have been recording um, recording that on uh, on screen screen sh uh, share, but maybe I'll I'll just do this here for anyone who wants to to come see this. So this net net equals host uh, dash dash net equals host. Okay. Um, so uh, those are the two things you want to do for the VPN. Number one set up the preferences to allow connection over LAN or whatever that wording was. Number And that's in a VP, any connect, Cisco AnyConnect VPN application. Number two is when you're going to run this Docker container, run it with dash dash net equal host. Okay? And that should allow you to connect through VPN. Okay? Okay. Um, it wasn't my intention to start the, uh, the lecture uh, with this. So what I'm going to 